Hello everyone, my name is Johann Stein from Johannesburg in South Africa. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to Elena and her team for the great work they are doing. I did follow some of the sessions during the last few days and it is amazing and I've learned a lot. So what I want to talk about in the next 20 minutes is the future of education and the role of artificial intelligence. What I normally do at the beginning of my talks when I speak about this topic, and I, I speak about this topic globally, normally to kind of business owners and senior executives, is to just make sure that when we say artificial intelligence, what do we mean and how do we feel about it? Because if we have a very pessimistic view, we will not necessarily learn or want to learn. When we have a positive view, like with all things in life, uh, the ability to learn new things will definitely be there. So I normally start off by showing these three pictures. The first one is the Terminator evil robot. The second one is the friendly little robot. And the third one is coding, computer coding. And I ask the audience, which one of these three most accurately illustrates what artificial intelligence is? And a lot of people would normally say the evil robot. But it is, in fact, as I'm sure a lot of you will know, coding. Like all technology, AI in itself is ambivalent. We can use it for good or we can use it for evil. And initiatives like this teen and Teens and AI um, event is using this kind of technology for good. If we use it for education, if we use it for medical research and other fields, then we use it for good. So I want you to have a positive um, and a, a, a hunger to learn kind of attitude when it comes to this kind of technology. Normally, technology, and especially breakthrough kind of technology, used to be the exclusive domain of what I call the technological elite. Maybe people in white coats somewhere in a, in a lab, or some senior exec, exec in an organization. But this kind of technology is there for all of us. No matter how old you are, no matter how learned or experienced you are, there are ways of getting your head around it, and so we should do. It's also important for knowledge workers and people in the business context. It's no longer IT driving business, but it's business setting the pace, setting the direction, and then IT through the use of these digital technologies and artificial intelligence and others actually then serve those business purposes. The workforce of tomorrow. A lot of you are young people on this call watching this video. My son is six. There's a good chance that he or you will be doing a job one day that may not quite exist yet. The challenge is our educational system at the moment, a curricula for our secondary tertiary education, because we don't know what to train people for, for the future, we are not training them. But even when it comes to skills that we know people can use, like coding, like data science and others, a lot of our curricula is not ready and, and ready for it to be used. I know of some organizations that's already you, um, training people from a uh, pre-primary perspective on the basics of coding and thinking analytically and that is possible so imagine we can take young people from the age of three two or three or so all the way through to university or tertiary education into the workforce so the challenge is because we don't know what kind of jobs are coming up uh, with the rise and the growth of artificial intelligence and other technologies what kind of jobs people are going to do, it's difficult to set the right kind of training curricula, especially from a school system point of view. I call this the road to the educational unknown. And this is my challenge and my clarion call, if you would, today. We don't know where we need to go, but we need to figure it out. We need to figure it out together. And it is possible to figure it out. Don't just settle for the status quo. I mean, do your best in school, do your best university, but know that there's a good chance that you're going to do a job one day that the current training is not completely preparing you for. And I say completely, because of course we can take the principles that we're learning right now and build on that for the career of tomorrow. But don't just focus on schooling and university. Be hungry for learning. Listen to videos, educational videos, read books, put yourself out there, expose yourself to all kinds of facts and figures so that you can empower yourself for this unknown but hopefully very exciting future. And then personal learning or personalized learning rather. Um, 
We still live in a world where a lot of us sit in a classroom looking at a teacher and irrespective of your own interests, of your own strengths, of your own personality, we are getting a bit of a one-size-fits-all deal. And the reason is because that's the only thing we know. But with the, us embracing technology like artificial intelligence, we can actually personalize the learning to each learner depending on their strengths. So for instance, some people are more visual than others. I'm one of those people. I like drawing pictures. I like drawing mind maps. Don't give me 20 paragraphs to read. I get bored after the first one. Give me a picture to look at or help me draw a picture. That's how I learn because I remember the pictures. But just because I learn with pictures doesn't mean my colleague next to me will. So AI can, through the way we use the system, through our behavior, can actually determine what is the best way to give us and present us with knowledge that we will be able to retain. Teaching the teacher is very important. A lot of our teachers are amazing people. They are so good at teaching and very knowledgeable. But not many people in the world are knowledgeable when it comes to artificial intelligence. So we have to find ways of making sure that our teachers are educated and trained in understanding this kind of technology and also how to lead others on this way and then connecting everyone. We still live in a world where millions of people are not connected to the internet. And we, the moment I say that, we think of the third world somewhere in the village in Africa, and that is definitely true. But we have poverty-stricken areas in some of the biggest, most famous cities of the world, London, New York, Hong Kong, others, where there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people living in poverty, definitely not connected to the internet. And, and you know, if you're struggling to feed yourself or your children every day, the last thing you're going to be worried about is to connect to Facebook or something like that. So we have to find a way to not just alleviate poverty, but to get everyone connected so that people can have access to the information they need to um, educate themselves. And then what I want to do now is show you a video. It's about a minute and a half long of educational applications that's already out there and that's already being used. And I'm going to ask Elena and her team to take the notes that I've sent them and to add it to this video when they place it on YouTube. So it'll be the name that you will see on the screen and the URL and go and investigate some of these applications. And there are many more than just a few I'm going to show you. But some of these you might be able to use as a learner or as a teacher. So here we go. some amazing um, applications that we've just seen. As I said, please take some time, go and look them up, go and look at their websites, look at the demos, and look at all the others that's already out there. So we don't have to necessarily always go and create these things. A lot of this technology is out there, but we have to maybe string some of them together to get our learners to the educational outcome that we need them to fulfill. Thank you again for this opportunity. I would like to thank Elena and her team and everyone who was watching. Remember, if the only thing I can leave you with is this, that you need to be hungry to learn as much as you can, that you must not fear this kind of technology, then I think I've done a good job. Enjoy the rest of this event.
and all the very best.